In recent videos, we've been discussing build systems in Sublime Text, how you can use them to execute external programs, some of the more advanced features, and some of the common problems that people run into. So in this week's video, let's cover a few more common problems to Sublime Text build systems. Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here on a sunny, bright day to bring you another video on Sublime Text build system common problems. But before we get to that, as always, as a reminder, if you're finding these videos helpful, please share, subscribe, and thumb as you deem appropriate. And if you have any comments or questions about the content of this video, any of my other videos, or suggestions for future videos you'd like me to do, drop those down in the comment section below, or hit me on Twitter at OdatNerd. The first problem we're going to cover here is buffering of data. And we're going to be using C as we have been in, through the rest of these uh, videos and the tiny CC compiler, the tiny C compiler. There's more information on that in the first video in this series. Now here we can see a very simple program. It prints the text first and second. And when I run it with control B, which is on Windows and uh, Linux or command B on Mac OS, we see it saying first and second and the whole build finished in 0.1 of a second. But what we would expect is printing two things. There's a little bit of overhead for running the program. No big deal. Now, if I was to uncomment this line, it's going to sleep for five seconds between first and second. And when I run it, it says it's building and we're not seeing any output and we're not seeing any output. And then it all appears all at once and it took 5.1 seconds. So all of the output appeared all at once. This is making you think that Sublime is capturing all of the output and waiting till the program finishes in order to display it. Oh, darn you, Sublime. Actually, it's the program that's at fault here, not Sublime. Sublime reads input, or sorry, Sublime reads output from the program that's running and displays it as it's made available. It just so happens that the program is buffering it in memory. Now, the rules for buffering are wild and esoteric. They depend on the programming language you're using, the underlying libraries, the platform that you're on, all that kind of stuff. Just basically speaking, uh, buffering is a way for a program to save the costly expense of writing output to a terminal or sending data to the disk and waiting for it to finish. Basically, if you wanted to write one megabyte of data to a disk file, you wouldn't send one byte down the line and then another byte down the line and then another byte down the line. You would try to grab as much data as you could into memory and send it all down in one big batch. The exact same thing is happening here. The program is thinking that because it's not talking to an interactive terminal that it should keep all of its output and then sh shuffle it all off to the end. So Sublime only gets it when the program is done because that's when the program clears the buffer. If you were writing, if, depending on the buffer size, if you were writing enough, eventually the buffer gets full and it gets flushed out. But for most cases, that hardly ever happens. Now, in this particular example, because this is C, if I did F flush standard out like so, which we don't want to get into C, but that's going to tell the underlying library the output, flush it all out now, empty the buffer. If I run the build again, when it says it's building, we see first right away, and then after a few seconds, second appears and it's done. So this proves that Sublime isn't doing that. Now, if you use view package file from the command palette, and choose the python.sublime build, the one that ships with Sublime, like so, you'll see that it's passing minus u to Python in this case. That is telling the Python interpreter, don't buffer your output, just send it out, which is why Python doesn't exhibit this problem in the general case. The lesson here is, no, it's not Sublime that's holding the output until the end, it's your program. You have to find a way to make your program do what you want. Now here's another example for us to look at for what is probably the second most common problem after the one we covered in the previous video where you try to run your program and it says it's an unknown command and you don't know why. This problem here is my program just seems to spontaneously hang in Sublime. What's going on here? So we have here an example C program that asks you for your name and then says hello to you. 
And as you can see, I also have an F flush on line eight here to make sure that the prompt is visible in Sublime. And when I run the build, the panel opens up at the bottom and asks me for my name. So I come in here and I click and I type my name, Odat Nerd, and hit enter. And it looks like my program might be hung. Uh, maybe if I build it again, type my name again. No, that's, uh, that's not working. Is my program hung? No, the actual problem here is that Sublime doesn't allow you to run interactive programs like this. Uh, the general gist of this is, although the output of the program is sent to this build output panel at the bottom of the window, input that you type into this panel isn't sent back to the program that's running. So this code is still running in the background, but it's waiting forever for input that I can't provide it because there's no connection between this and it running in the background. This also leads to another common problem that people have. If you're using C, when you run a C program, not using TCC, but with conventional tools like the GCC compiler under Windows or things of that nature, you have to compile your program to an object file, then you need to link it to an executable file, and then you need to run the executable. And Windows locks executable files and other files when they're open to stop people from fiddling with them while they're in use. So you'll find a situation where you try to run your program that's interactive like this. It seems to fail, and then you go back into the code and double check, and when you try to run it again, now it won't even run. Now you get an error from the linker, like LD error or collect error that says permission denied. That's because your program is still running in the background. Windows has the executable file locked, so it can't create a new one. But how do we actually solve this problem? Now, common solutions to this particular problem involve crafting a build system that opens a command prompt externally and then runs your program in that console and then you could actually interact with it as normal. Basically say a DOS command prompt would pop up or a Windows command terminal would pop up or an X term would pop up, something along those lines depending on the platform that you're on. There is another better way to do that though using a package in Sublime Text, so let's cover that. Now the package in question that we're talking about here is the Terminus package by Randy3k, and this is the preeminent package for having a command prompt or terminal from directly within Sublime Text. We're not going to go into a ton of detail on how it works, uh, that's the subject for another video, but if you're looking for a command prompt or terminal from directly within Sublime, that's the package you should be looking at. It works across all platforms, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And as an added benefit, you can use it in a build system. So it goes a little something like this. We want to create a new build system for this. So we're gonna go ahead and go to Tools, Build System, New Build System, as we did before. And here's one that I prepared earlier as before. And I'm going to save this as TCC Interactive dot sublime spelling it correctly dash build and hit enter now this is slightly different than the build we saw before if we can see over here we could use shell command or command to run tcc minus run and the name of a file and we can have a file regex in here to capture errors so we can navigate to them and there's a working directory to specify the current directory when the program is running and a selector so that sublime knows that this is should be used when a c source file is the current file this version is slightly different now if you recall the video that we where we talked about custom build targets we're using a terminus command called terminus open here which is a for opening a terminal in terminus the package and that particular command accepts slightly different arguments than what you might expect in a build system so we have to use command and not shell command because terminus open expects command and we can still specify a working directory here what we can't specify is a file regex because what we're actually doing is opening a terminal so there's no way for Sublime to be able to capture those errors and navigate them to you anyway so it doesn't accept that as a parameter. And we also have this pre uh, item in here called auto close false that makes sure that Terminus doesn't immediately close the tab as soon as the program is done running.
So if we come back over to our test interactive here, when I do the build, now there's another build than there was before, and we can pick TCC Interactive. That is the new one. And we can see that the program, it's popped up a new tab named Terminus, and it's asking me for my name, and there's actually a caret in there. So that's a good sign, and we can type ODAT nerd and hit enter, and it says, hello, ODAT nerd, and the program is done. Now, this, of course, will work on Linux and Mac OS at all, which is why this is a great uh, thing to do here. I can go ahead and close that tab. And I can even run it again and choose my name instead of my nickname. And it works just as well that way. So there we have it. A couple more of the more common problems that people have with build systems. And uh, I hope you're finding these videos helpful. And if so, please thumb and subscribe and share, you know, all of that good stuff like that. If you have any questions on this video or other videos I've created, or you'd like me to cover a specific topic of yours, leave those comments in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at... Uh, Odat Nerd. Until the next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.